All right, I'm going to do a video proving that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God the Father are the same person, and that God is one that exists in three, just three and one. Now, people will say, well, you're oneness, you're oneness. Uh, no, I deny oneness, and I've done plenty of videos exposing oneness. I'm not oneness. I reject modalism and oneness heresy. However, I also reject Trinitarianism. You see, you have this false dichotomy of either you're oneness or you're a Trinitarian. Uh, neither one of them is right. They're both equally false. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to take a, a jab at Trinitarianism because I've been doing some stuff exposing oneness. So you can check that out and just prove that I'm not oneness. I mean, check out all my videos I've done exposing the heresy of modalism and oneness. But I'm going to take a jab at the Trinity now. And what the Trinitarians claim is that Jesus Christ and God the Father are two separate persons. And that they're basically, they're, they're one in essence, one in unity. And it's kind of funny because these terms, one in essence and one in unity, none of them appear in scripture. They had to, they had to add these terms, one in essence, one in unity. But let's say they're one in essence, one in unity, in that they're, they're three persons, persons, but one God. And run the first John, they'll run the first John 5, 7, which says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. They'll say, see, look, three persons. Uh, it doesn't say that anywhere in the text, that, that these three persons are one. It just says these three are one. And if you look in the Bible, all throughout the New Testament, God is always referred to as person singular, not persons so kind of a problem there but here's some verses proving that jesus christ and the father are the same not not the same like not the same as in like there's no distinction like the modalists will claim but they're the same as in like they're they're both god i mean they're they're both like, like i'll put it this way the father is in jesus christ that's a good way to put it but let's get right into it first john i have, I have a bunch of scriptures i've written down here uh first john chapter one verse one to two says in the beginning was the capital w word because the capital w word is always in reference to jesus christ the lowercase w is in reference to the written word of god the capital w is as in reference to jesus christ the manifest word of god in the beginning was the word the word was what the word sorry the word was with god and the word was god uh, the same was in the beginning with god so the word jesus christ is god he was god yeah, and obviously he is God, you know. Hmm, interesting. So the Word is God. And so is the God the Father. They're both God. They're both one God. Next verse, John 10, verse 30. Here's a good verse that makes a problem for these Trinitarians. John chapter 10, verse number 30. Because they're saying that Jesus is not God the Father. Okay, John 10, 30. I and my Father are one. Hmm. Jesus and the Father are one. So you claim that Jesus is not God the Father. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying that God the Father is, like the modalists will claim, that God the Father and Jesus are the same in the sense that the modalists claim. I'm saying that they're the same as in the Father exists in Jesus Christ when he was on earth. That's what I mean by that. But he says that I and my Father are one. How do you answer that? So Jesus is not God the Father. Uh, I and my Father are one. You know, kind of a problem there if you're a Trinitarian. John chapter 14, verse 10 to 11. John 14, 10 to 11. Here's another one proving that the Father is in Jesus Christ. Uh, believest now, the, sorry, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not unto myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me doeth the works. Verse 11, believe not that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for my very work's sake. The Father dwells in Jesus Christ according to Jesus Christ. Not according to me, not according to Brian Dillinger, or, or you know, the Father is in Jesus Christ according to Jesus Christ. He says the Father dwelleth in me. Hmm, interesting. Uh, where is it? John 14, 20. Uh, it says... At that day you shall know that I am in my Father. You know, again, I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Hmm. So Jesus is in the Father, and the Father is in Jesus Christ. They are, they are only one person. That's how it goes. And here's some verses proving that, the, that, that God is glorified in Jesus Christ, and that God glorifies Jesus in himself. Here's some verses on that. Uh, John 13, verse... 31 to 32. John 13, 
verses 31 to 32. It says, And therefore when he was gone out, Jesus said, The Son of Man is glorif Son of man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Verse 32, And if God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. So the Son of God is glorified in God the Father. Interesting. Kind of makes a problem for the whole uh, Trinity, the Trinity teaching that Jesus is not God the Father. And again, what I mean by when I say that is that the Father exists in Jesus Christ. The Father is, in, you know, for in Him, for in Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You know, uh, Colossians, the, uh, Colossians says that. John fourteen thirteen. Here's another good one. John chapter fourteen. Verse thirteen. Another good one makes a problem for this uh, Trinitarian stuff. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that in my Father, or sorry, that, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So the Father is glorified in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And again, I'm not denying, the yeah, some people say, oh, you're denying that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, several times in this video, I've already said Jesus is the Son of God. I will publicly confess right now that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It's, it, and why I believe that is because it's biblical. The Bible says that Jesus is the Son of God, okay? And he's also God the Father in the sense that the Father is in Jesus Christ when he was on earth. Okay? But no, I don't deny that Jesus is the Son of God. I don't deny that. So I'm probably going to get that put on me by people who just stalk my channel and just, just you know, attack me on every little point. It's ridiculous. John 16, 32. Uh, this is a good verse on... Another good verse saying the Father is actually with Jesus. John 16, 32. says... <clears throat> Uh, where is it? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, uh, is now come, that ye shall be... Sorry, I'm not good at reading on a computer. I've said that in the other videos. Uh, ye, 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 sorry, yeah. Yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet, uh, yet, sorry, yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Hmm. So Jesus says the Father is with him. Uh, interesting. Again, making a problem with this whole Trinitarian stuff. Uh, Jesus and the Father, here's a verse on Jesus and the Father are one. John 17, verse 21 to 22. John chapter 17, verse 21 to 22. says, and, and, and the context of this passage is Jesus actually, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is praying to God the Father. So again, proving there is also, like, I mean, it also debunks the uh, oneness claim that, that there is no distinction in the Godhead, because we see it right here. The Son of God is praying to God the Father. The parts of the Godhead can interact with each other. Again, proving there is distinction in the Godhead and separation. So, no, I, I, don't, I don't deny that, I mean, the Trinitarians, I've always said this, the Trinitarians are right in a sense when they say that, that there is separation in the Godhead, but where they go wrong is saying there, there are three persons in divine essence or whatever. But they are right in a sense when they say when they say that that there is separation and the parts of the Godhead can interact with each other. They are they are right. And here, here's a good example of that uh, in John 17. And here's a verse. Uh, it's kind of funny. John 17 actually debunks modalism and trinitarianism because John 17 proves that the the Godhead can interact with each other. So it debunks modalism, but it also disproves Trinitarianism because it says that, that it proves that Jesus and the Father are one. I'm going to show you that. Uh, John 17, verse 21, that they uh, all may be gone as thou, Father, are in me, hmm, and I in thee, uh, that they also may be uh, one in us. Hmm. One in us? They're one. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So again, proving distinction, because the Father sent the Son. So there is distinction there too, obviously. Verse 22, uh, And the glory which thou hast given me, I give unto them, that they, that they, that say, eh, again, not good at reading on a computer, that they may be one, even as we are one. Hmm. So the Father and Son are one? Hmm. How do you answer that if you're saying that Jesus is not God the Father, and the Father is not the Son of God? And again, let me just clarify to all the people who just who who are probably going to attack me and make videos about me over this. You know, what I what I mean when I say Jesus is God the Father is that the Son of God, the God that God the Father, when the Son of God was on Earth, God the Father was in the Son of God as, you know, the Soul, the Spirit. So yeah, again, I don't den I don't deny that Jesus is is the Son of God. Okay, He is the Son of God. However, He is not God the Son or or, or a second person or whatever. 
he is the Son of God, okay? But he's not God the Son or second person. None of that stuff appears in the Bible. So this is some scripture that's proving, and, the, and that, that's just in the Gospel of John. I mean, there's so many verses in the Pauline Epistles I could go to, so many verses back in the Old Testament I could go to, proving that God is one, okay? One person. So, anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.